Good morning, guys. Happy Monday. I hope you enjoyed your three-day weekend and you're well-rested. Um, I want to say thank you to those of you who have followed the directions and completed assignments and been respectful to the sub. Um, I was left a note. Thank you all for your note that you left for me. Um, but please be mindful that even though I am away, I still expect the same behavior, the same expectations apply with the sub as it does for me. Okay, so today's do now is using a histogram, which you all did well on the mastery check. I will be entering those grades either later today or um, Tuesday. Um, update on me, I am off of my crutches, trying to mobilize with just the boot on my foot. I have pins and stitches and I go back to the doctor on Friday to get the pin removed as well as the stitches. So hopefully he, the doctor will let me return on Monday, March 27th. But as soon as um, I find out, I will send you all a message in Canvas to let you know whether I'm back on Monday or not. So let's look at the do now with the histogram. It says the graph below shows the distribution of scores of 30 students on a mathematics test. OK, so remember, this side here is the frequency and this here are the test scores and they're broken up into equal intervals. So 41 to 50. 51 to 60, 61 to 70, 71 to 80, 81 to 90, and 91 to 100. So it's asking you to complete the frequency table, which this is your frequency table, using the data in the frequency histogram shown. So we have to go back here to get this information to fill out the frequency table. So the first thing I tell you to do is look between each interval Look at our frequency. This is counting by twos. Okay. And so I want you to look at that. As you can see here, our frequency, I mean, our histogram intervals start at 41 and go through 100. But my frequency table starts with the information 91 to 100. This is something that the SOL will do to make sure that you're paying attention to what scores they have in the frequency table and not just automatically go to the first bar and then record your information. So for 91 to 100, we need to go here. And I like to label my bars um, before I fill out my frequency table. So let's do that first. So 41 to 50 is between two and four, which means that's three. 51 to 60 is um, between four and six, so that's five. 61 to 70 is not shaded at all, so that's gonna be zero. So I'm just gonna write a big zero right there. And then we have 71 to 80. This bar here goes to the very top, so that's 12. And then we have 81 to 90, that stops right at the eight. And then our final interval is 91 to 100, and that stops right at the two line. Okay, so it told you it had 30 students. So let's see, does 3 plus 5 plus 0 plus 12 plus 8 plus 2, does that equal 30? 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 0 is 8, plus 12 is 20, plus 8 is 28, plus 2 is 30. So that means that we counted our information correctly. So now let's fill out our frequency table. Let me move this up just a little. All right, so 91 to 100, that's this interval here. There are two students. For 81 through 90, there are eight students. For 71 through 80, there are 12 students. For 61 to 70, it's not shaded, so that is zero. And then 51 to 60, that's five. 
and then 41 to 50 is 3. So now you've completed the frequency table according to the information given in your histogram for the distribution of math test scores. All right, place this do now into your math folder, not on the floor, not on your table, in your math folder. And then we will move on to what's next for the, today. So today you will begin similar figures, which is unit 7A. And we will start with similar figure notes for today. And then you will create a vocabulary booklet using Google uh, Sheets. And then there's an IXL AA14 for you to complete. Everything is listed on Canvas each day of what you should cover and complete. Okay? So similar figures, before we start, we need to look at polygons because that's what we use for similar figures, a polygons. So one thing about polygons, for seventh grade, you only need to know three-sided and four-sided. So a three-sided polygon is a triangle and polygons are made of straight lines, okay? Polygons are made of straight lines. They meet at a point when they're connected. And these points are called vertices. Okay. A quadrilateral, quadrilateral, I'm sorry, is four sides. And they're going to have four vertices. The point where those straight lines connect to make that quadrilateral. Okay? Where these vertices meet, you have angles. That's a symbol for an angle. So that's an angle. That's another angle. And then this is the third angle. Okay? So I put this in here to represent each angle. So if I drew another triangle, as you'll see later in the lesson, you will see how these angles correspond to each other. This four-sided quadrilateral, oh, let me go back to here. These angles, the sum of the angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. So if I add this angle plus this angle plus this angle, it always equals 180 degrees. For a quadrilateral, the four angles is 360 degrees, okay? So in this case, these form right angles, and we all know that right angles equal 90 degrees because it forms a square corner. Okay, right angle equals 90 degrees. So for this unit, we'll be talking about two polygons, triangles and quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals can be any four-sided figure. So I'm going to flip my page and show you some examples of quadrilaterals. You have the square on the front. There's a rectangle. So quadrilaterals will have four vertices. And that's where these line segments meet to make that four-sided figure. Parallelogram is nothing but a rectangle that the wind blew. So we no longer have these four right angles. But the sum of the angle still is 360 degrees. And this is a trapezoid, okay? Still has four vertices where these line segments connect to make it the quadrilateral. So again, we will be looking at 
triangles and quadrilaterals for this unit on similar figures. Okay, please go to Canvas and open up the module to Monday, March 20th. Click on Similar Figures, Day 1 Notes. Go ahead, open it up, and get ready to do your annotations from today's notes. Okay, you should have um, the notes up. If not, um, please pause the video until you have it open and are ready to begin the notes. Okay, let's begin our notes for today. So today, um, your objective is to be able to write proportions to express the relationships between the links of corresponding sides of similar quadrilaterals and triangles. And all these words that are unfamiliar to you will now become uh, familiar, okay? So two polygons are similar if the corresponding angles, and we will talk about that, have the same measurement. So if they have the same measurements, the same thing as being congruent. The corresponding angles have the same measurement. And then the length of corresponding sides form a, back to our butterflies, guys. We're back to proportions again. Okay. So let's look at corresponding angles. So you see this arrow is here and this arrow is here. This symbol here means angle inside of that triangle. So in the triangle or either the quadrilateral, you see this and this, that's one. So that means that this corresponding angle here is the same as this corresponding angle here. So first, let's look at what um, shape we have. We have a triangle here. So you got to remember that a triangle, tri means three. So it's going to have three sides and three angles always. Okay? So a triangle has three sides. That's a side, that's a side, that's a side. And I'm going to um, show you how to um, tell the difference between the sides. And then, because these are similar triangles, similar means that they have same shape, different sizes. So similar is same shape, but different sizes. So as you can see in this triangle here and this triangle here. Now, when we see these triangles, we have to name it by the letters of the triangle and depending on how we name the first triangle we have to go in that same order for the second one but before we go to naming let's remember that corresponding ang angles are congruent which means the same so corresponding angles are always the congruent which is another as equal that's what that means Okay, when we talk about corresponding sides, we're going to write a proportion. Okay, so what does this mean that corresponding angles are congruent? It means that whatever the measure of this angle here, angle A, is going to be the same as this angle D. But let's um, do the vertices first. So this is point A. That's point B, that's point C. And this one, this is point D, point E, and point F. Okay? Now, let's look at the sides. So 
So the sides are the line segments that connect to make the triangle or the quadrilateral. So this one, that's side AB, and that's going to correspond to this side DE. So if I was to cut this smaller one out and lay it here, this side and this side would be in proportion to each other. All right, so since I went AB, I'm going to BC. Do this in purple. And you can choose whatever colors you want to. And then this is EF. These two sides are corresponding sides. Okay. And then I went AB, BC. Now I'm going back to CA. And here it's F, D. So we just color coded that triangle, although I was a little crooked here, to show where the corresponding sides are. So now let's look at corresponding angles. So when we look at angles, first of all, this square corner means 90 degrees. So you know these two are going to be congruent because you see that square corner. So then this angle, let me get a different color. Let's use this one. So this angle here, just the one, corresponds with this angle here. Okay? And then this angle with the two bars, corresponds with this angle here. So it's kind of like they're related to each other because they're in the same position of the triangle. Right? So because we have color coded it, now we can write similarity statements. Let's let that focus. There we go. So our similarity statement, this little symbol right here means similar. So whenever you see that symbol right there, that's what it means. This says means just what it says. Triangle ABC, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Now did you notice how they went in the same direction from point a to point b from point b to point c from point c back to a on this one point d to e point e to f and then point f back to d they went in the same direction to get back to the beginning point all right so for this one angle a i'm gonna color code this put a little circle Angle A, point A is going to be with point D. Because again, if I was to cut that smaller circle out and put it inside, I mean circle, uh, triangle out, then um, the two of them would correspond with each other with that location. Point B is with point E. And let's use purple. And then we have point C. It's going to correspond with point F. Okay? And another way we could look at it, we could write out the letters of that triangle. A, B, C. And then if we look here, this one is D, E, F. So we put D, E, F. So these are what makes these two triangles similar. Remember, similar, similar means same shape, different sizes. All right, let's look at the corresponding angles in these triangles. So first, you gotta say what this means. 
An equal sign with the similarity symbol above it means that it is congruent. Remember earlier in our notes, we said that corresponding angles are congruent. What does this symbol mean? It looks like a less than sign, but it's actual, actually the symbol for an angle. So we're saying angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle A is right here. It's congruent to angle D. Okay? They are congruent because we see this little symbol here that shows this angle and this angle, and it's telling you the measure of whatever this angle A is, it's going to be the same angle measured for angle D. Okay, let's fill out the second part. If I go back here, I can see angle B is going to be congruent to angle E. Okay, angle B is going to be congruent to angle E. If there's a square corner in one of your triangles, in order for it to um, be corresponding, you need to have that square corner in that same position. And then finally, we have left angle C is congruent to angle F. Okay, I'm going to try to get um, some patty paper in to show you how you could trace the um, triangles and place it inside there. But since I'm not in the building, I do not have access to it. But I'll see if somebody can get some patty paper in so you all can do it. All right. So now let's look at these corresponding sides. A little bit. Okay. So the corresponding sides up here, we had where well, I had orange and orange. So we could do that one which was side a b and remember corresponding sides are proportional so that's why we're writing these proportion where two ratios are equal so in the smaller um one side d e matches with that one and then i think i'm gonna go with the um bottom one again let me see if i can slide this down just a little so you can see it hopefully yeah so side AB corresponded with my side DE because the orange to the orange. Now I'm doing purple to purple. BC matches with my EF, the purple to the purple. So that's my proportion for if I use AB, side AB, if I start with side AB. I could also use side AB again. And use this one here. AB is to BC. AB is to side BC. As DE is to EF. So that's just another way to write your corresponding sides. Okay, I'm going to pause to let you all catch up, and then we'll go to the next page. Okay, let's look, excuse me, look at page two, where we have symbols and definitions and examples. So, this symbol means similar or same shape but different size. That's the key word on that one. Same shape, different size. Here are my two triangles, same shape, but different sizes. One is larger than the other one. When you see this with a triangle in front of three letters, that's naming this. This means triangle, and then you put the name of it, A, B, C, W, X, Y, whatever letters are on your triangle. So this said A, B, C. You can start anywhere. It could be A, C, B. It could be B, C, A or B, A, C. It can be anywhere as long as you name the three vertices of that triangle to give it that name. 
okay? This right here means line segment. Let's write that there, line segment, because with polygons, they're made of line segments. And it says side connecting angles. And what angles are being connected here? They have it um, stated. So this one is D and E, or you can say E and D, just as long as you have. So D and E, and I'm going to write or E and D. Just as long as you have these two. So that's a side. This is another side. And that's the third side. So a triangle has three sides to it. They're made of line segments. Where they meet is the vertices or vertex point. Okay? This right here means angle. Okay? And whatever letters behind it is telling you what angle they're talking about. In this one, that's angle I. If they had it here, it'd be angle H. If they had it here, it'd be angle J. And then if they had it here, it'd be angle K. This is a quadrilateral, so it's going to have four angles because it has four sides. Okay? This symbol here means congruent. Same shape, same size. Okay? Same shape, same size. They're both the same size and same shape. All right, you'll need this information when you do your booklet once we finish this. Okay? So now let's look at this. Reflect all the true statements regarding the similar figures represented below. Again, we have a quadrilateral. This means the angle A matches with which angle in this larger one? That's correct, angle G. This one has two, so angle B corresponds to which one in this larger one? Correct, angle H. And then angle C has three, so angle C corresponds to which one in this one? Angle E, good job. So now let's look at what they're asking us here. So we will see the true statement. First of all, this means similar, okay? Similar means same shape, different sizes. Do we see same shape, different sizes? Yes. So this says A, B, C, D. So we need to go in that order. A to B, B to C, C to D, okay? Up, down, down, okay? A, B, C, D. Let's see if it's similar to G. H, E, F. Did they go in the same order? Did we go in the same direction? Did we go up, slide down, slice, and come back across? Yes, we did. So for that one, you can highlight it on your screen, or I'm just going to shade mine in with a pencil, but you can highlight, highlight it, circle it, shade it, whatever, so that you can see that that one works. Mine is not. Let me use a color pencil and see if that helps. a little better all right let's um go over here and look at the angle angle a where's angle a correct right here it says angle a this means congruent to angle g it's angle a and angle g are they in the same place if i was to cut this small one put it on top of this big one are they in the same spot you should say yes because both of them have just one Symbol mark for the angle. Okay. So, so far we have the first and second one shaded. All right, let's look at angle B. Angle B has how many um, swirls? Two. And it's trying to say that it's congruent to angle F. Where's angle F? Ooh, right here. Does angle F have two? No. So, we will not shade that one. All right. Now we have. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. You see the order I went? A, B, C, D. Just like it asked. Now, let's look at F, E, F, E, G, H. Can we do that? F, E, and then G is over here. No, we have to stay connected to the line segment. So, are we going to shade this one? 
No, we will not shade that one because it didn't follow the order of A, B, C, D. And you cannot go from point E and go across, take a shortcut and get to G. G has to be connected. All right. Um, let's come back to this one last. Let's do this one here. B, C, D, A. All right. Let's watch it. B, C, D, A. Started B, slid down, little slice, come straight up, and then we went back. Let's see what we have here. H, E, F, G. Did it follow the same order? D, H, yep. C, E, yep. D, F, yep. And then A, G. So, yes. So, we're going to shade that one. It went in the same order. So, those two are similar. Same shape different sizes. All right, so now we have two proportions. Remember that when we talk about proportions, we're talking about sides, all right? Angles are going to have one letter. Sides are going to have two because it's going to be the points of the line segment. So let's see what we have here. A, B, so here, here, G, H. Do those two work? A, B from point A to B. G to H. So far, these two work. Now let's say C D. C D. Start here, go here. And E F. Start here, go here. Are they the same? Yes. So therefore, they are proportional. Those sides are proportional. So if we had to find the measure of the missing side, we set up the proportion and then we solve for the missing side. All right, let's look at this one. B A. Start at the top, come down. H G, H G, yes. Okay, B A H G. Then it says F E, F E, and then D C. This one, remember, when we look at the smallest to the largest, we start out with B A. We started here, so this should be C D instead of D C. So we will not shade that one. Remember, order matters, and I'm going to write here. Order matters. Okay? So hopefully um, you understand how we um, find corresponding angles and how we find corresponding sides. So your next um, assignment is to submit this page to me, um, well, this document to me. And then you are going to go to Canvas, click on the booklet. There is a template for Google Slides for you to create your booklet. Each page has what term that you need to have on each page. You're going to write it, explain it in your own words. You're going to give an example. And then when you finish all of the different terms that you need to know for this unit, the last thing is for you to set up a proportion question for the last slide for um, you to solve. So you're going to set it up and then you're going to solve it. Once you finish that, you're going to go to IXL. Everything is listed on Canvas for today. There is a possibility you may not get to finishing your um, booklet or the IXL, but that means on the next day, once you finish whatever's assigned, you need to go back because otherwise you'll get an incomplete if it's not submitted by the date that is due. And you can look at the due dates on everything. So remember, after um, I in this video, you're going to go and you're going to go to Canvas, go to the Google Slide template and create your booklet with examples and explanations. and then. You will go to IXL if you have not finished. Remember to submit. When you don't submit, then you get an incomplete. Okay? Please do not be anywhere else. Um, I do have securely running. Not that I should have to have it running while I'm home recuperating. But some of you um, would rather be in trouble with technology and parents because I am um, emailing parents to let them know. So have a good rest of your day, a great Monday, and I will be back with you tomorrow morning. Be great and have a great day.